I, te I teleported into the stratosphere, but hello everyone, welcome in. How are we all doing today? Hi, hi, I have three stream watch streak. Hell yeah, let's go. Also, how dare there be an ad in progress the minute we start? That's rude. That's very rude, Twitch. What the fuck? What the Banui? What the Banuin? Ayo. Hello everyone, how are we all doing? Hello, Bulch Prunswick. Hello, Anime Emmy. And hello, Benuin. Welcome in. Hi, hi, hi. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I had things I wanted to talk about the moment stream started. I had funny stories. And now my brain is just gone. I don't know what I wanted to talk about. Shit. <laughs> but hello, chat. Oh yes, my mother said that she'll stop beating me. That's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, I put I put in the, the quotes uh, channel a while ago, chat. That my mother said that she will finally stop beating me on Tuesdays. And I didn't elaborate. <laughs> um, so me and my family have this joke. Uh, that's been going on for years, ever since I dyed my hair red. It's not red anymore, but it used to be. I used to look like the fucking Wendy's mascot, but with short-ass hair. Um, but she would always look at me, and anytime I did something wrong, she would just be like, Bunny, I will beat you like a red-headed stepchild on a Tuesday. And I just have to go, ha? Huh? <laughs> yo, yo, do what? <laughs> Excuse me, mama. What the fuck? Why you do that to me? <laughs> But, uh, we've been doing that for, like, over seven years now, as long as I've had the fucking cat, okay? As long as I've had Al. We've- she- she's always said that to me. And now she finally, uh, after we went to the movies yesterday, she's like, Alright, boys, like, she sent me a member of the video, she's like, Alright, I will stop beating you on Tuesdays, we go to the movies now. And I'm like, yeah! yeah! <laughs> finally! <laughs> I'm kidding. My mother doesn't actually beat me. It's just a joke. Um, <laughs> I just rad. Hello, rad. I'm ready to beg for a gift sub just to be relieved of the curse of ads, but I don't want to seem like a desperate broken ass bitch. Uh, just accept the fact that you're broke and it'll all be okay. <laughs> no, I honestly, when I started watching people on Twitch, I couldn't for the longest time because I genuinely, I cannot sit through ads. I... I don't know why. I need to, like, constantly be watching and talking. Like, I don't like going on streams where I can't talk to the person. Or, like, if a stream that has, like, seven minute long ads. I can't. I can't. I, like, try to set my ads to, like, the longest fucking, like, time. Not, like, the longest I could set it. I put it to the shortest time I could set it to. But, like, I think it's, like, every hour ads will play. It's either every hour or every half an hour. I don't remember. So they're like, I think it's like a minute worth of ads. I, I do that because I, I understand the pain of watching ads. And genuinely, I I do not enjoy ads. <laughs> what the fuck? Why are you taking my glasses? We're not even reading yet. Fine, 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 fine. We'll read. All right? Are you happy now? Let's get rid of the glow. You don't get the glow. You get bright mode. <laughs> you get to be blind, you bitch. My watch streak, hey! And you get extra carrots for having a watch streak. Congratulations. Oh, it's so weird, I almost clicked restart. Chat, for the first time ever, we are actually clicking the load button. Because we'd stopped in like the minute of, like in the middle of chapter six due to a time issue. 
I'm sorry for that, by the way. Uh, but now we don't have a time issue. Hold on, though. I do need a drink. Wow. I... You really, really snatched my, my weed, Sarichi. Wee! Yes, yes, queen! <laughs> Koichi. Oh, not Sarichi. Sorry, my dad. Um, hold on. I gotta take a sip. We gotta, we gotta ourselves a sprout today. Because it's the closest thing of, uh, sustaining waterable liquids I will ever have in my life. <laughs> Alright, let's load the save. And we're just... Going straight into it with Mamiya. Um, fuck, what happened last time? Chat, we need a recap. Last time we were- I snapped my fingers as if you guys would hear that. I don't think you heard that. I don't think my mic picks up my snapping. Do you- Hello. You just snap every now and then to get your guys' attention. It's like jingling keys, like, hey. Judge- I fucking hate when people snap. <laughs> what the spray? Yeah, what the spray? Bald, no! I don't want to be bald! You- you don't get the Q-tip! Um, but oh, what happened last time? All the Mamiya's finally confronted Natsumi! Natsumi's like, fuck you! I'm gonna be the one that brings him happiness! And then Mamiya's like, no you bitch! You're gonna do the same thing I did! <laughs> Bring him despair once you disappear! Oh, okay, back on this account because MC? Because- what do you mean because MC? I'm confuzzled. I want to see Ball Bunny. Wow, you actually snatched my Wii Sarichi wig. Yeah, clean. It's, it's just for the clip. A anyone, the only reason Emmy wants me bald is just to hear the funny little sound alert. All right. Let's get right into this, though, with our main Mamiya, Mamiya Yumehisha. Uh, he is the Mamiya that everyone kind of talks about, but nobody fucking sees him as him. <laughs> Besides not to me, so I don't understand. I don't get the logic of Mamiya. I think it's a neat game. Minecraft. Oh, Minecraft. Wait, though, why do you need to switch accounts because of Minecraft? I'm confused. You know what? I don't care. I'm confused. But all right. I thought you'd never come here again. I forgot the voice I did for this man. This is not the voice. <laughs> the man smiled with the within the darkness. <laughs> What's your plan? The story ends with him being taken to the tree lochism. That's the ending. <laughs> No matter what wisdom you wield, and no matter if you feel like you saved them, you can't actually go past that time. <laughs> as long as you're a spectator, you'll never be able to save your friends. It's not true. I may not know what happens after the ending, but that's information that not even you have. They can be happy even without me. They have the power to do that. Thank you for the lurk, Eater Jinx! Welcome in! This account is my phone. Ah, okay. Wow, okay. So we're just taught. Okay, so it's about. He's not making people happy, okay? Not to me, he's actually being a little bitch. <laughs> my resolute shout made Mamiya's eyebrows twitch in irritation. You still continue to spout that naive nonsense? You really, 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 really don't understand anything. You think they'll just lead happy lives when you leave them? The fact that you can't drop this optimism is the reason why you- I found it strange that he would raise his voice like that. However, it only lasted a moment, and he quickly regained his crescent smile. The two eyes above it pierced me harder than ever before. <laughs> do you actually understand? Oh, you do actually understand, right, Natsumi? His black and gre green eyes bore into me. I felt genuinely uneasy. Understand what? The strength of his words made me stagger. I couldn't rely on anyone. He made me feel as though... Someone as useless as me would just fall into the darkness of hell. The meaning behind the actions you took before the end credits. Huh? You know where you try to take them? And you know what the trilochism is? Stop. You know what you are. You really do know, don't you? A moment later, darkness came over my eyes. Oh god! Oh! Oh, that's loud! The Mamiyas all collapsed. Blood spurted out. Within rain. Within a bathtub. Within the city. Within the sea. Who killed... Who cornered them? Who was responsible? 
Whose malice crushed them? Whose benevolence brought about their end? <laughs> I had a feeling about this. I'd known it all along. I merely averted my eyes from it due to other factors long before Mamiya ever asked me. I'd known it since the time I died. Oh, I'm gonna turn it up for you guys. It was obvious what the trilochism was. I knew where I would return. If the trilochism was the place where people went after death, the place where Natsumi went after dying, then... That library with its countless books. Alright then, let's go to the trilochism where Mamiya's waiting for us. Alright then, let's go beyond that light. Was the very same trilochism Mamiya always spoke of? Oh my god! Holy shit! You're so much fun to watch and hang out with IRL. I hope you and me and Phoenix can meet up sometime. Hell yeah, that'd be fun. That's why me wanting to make you bald. No, you're not making me bald in real life. But holy shit! Our boy is crazy now! No, I... I don't know that. You do. I don't. You're the same. We're the same. I... Uh, I... No! No! I grabbed my head and writh writhered in agony. My brain ached, refusing to accept his words as truth. No. I didn't know that. I didn't intend that. I wanted to save them. The fact that the happy ending would lead to the same place where Mamiya, where this man was taking them. I... I don't! <laughs> I shouted, hoping that would make the headache go away. However, my feelings and my brain accepted his words as truth. I... I... Within my fading consciousness, I gently moved my mouth. My flesh alone seemed to reject this truth. If it stopped resisting this, I would be consumed by this darkness. Oh, we get a cool Mamiya scene with a badass music. Hold on. Be gone, chat. Look at our boy. Wait, we're not even in full screen, are we? Oh, no, we are. Okay. Look at him. He's such a pretty little bad boy. <laughs> He's so pretty. Uh, I left stream and rejoined because it was freezing out for a few seconds. Oh, no, that's fine. Natsumi, you did good. For a clueless, foolish puppet of a spectator, that is. <laughs> so let's end this. Don't get in the way of the story we wish for. There's nothing you can do about it. You yourself had no choice in this, did you? Oh my god! Okay, fuck Nagaki and the teacher. I want this as my fucking background now. Oh my god. This looks amazing. However, I would switch it. I would have Natsumi as my main screen, which is my right or my left. Yeah, not right. I know my lefts and rights chat, I think. Perchance. Oh, uh, but my god. Oh, I put the wrong chat up. Sorry. Hold on. I'm scuffed today. We're in a we're in a silly funny mood. I... Within the darkness, I felt the weight of my unresponsive body. I did work hard. For someone so pitiful, I did reasonably well. Why not just rest? Perhaps he was right. I certainly was feeling a little tired. No matter how hard I tried, their happiness drifted farther and farther away. Oh! Oh, why is there a TikTok? I wanted to check a message because my phone was buzzing. What the fuck? Their happiness drifted farther and farther away. The more I struggled, the more alone I became. It might be a good time to just rest and look at the scenery. Yeah, you did well. <laughs> You've done enough. What an enticing voice. I could hardly resist it. A gentle peaceful land of harmony. I felt like I could see it right in front of me. Go on. Take my hand. 
You should rest for a bit. But then my hazy vision, I saw his pale hand. I, I saw it as my only salvation. So, I... Oh my god! We get another one of these, chat. Do we take his hand? Do I, Natsumi, take, take Mamiya as my husband? <laughs> oh my god, the husbands are getting a divorce. It's just a different pair of husbands. Uh, steal the hand? Just fucking chop that shit off, huh? Hold on, we'll save it. Because sometimes they have different dialects. Or a dialect. What am I talking about? They'll have different choices later on. So let's take the hand. Divorce the man. Well, we're taking his hand. I took his hand. Very good. This is how it should be. You did your best. Mamiya. It's okay. I'm sorry. I made... I know. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I'll forgive you for everything. Let us return now. Don't let go of my hand again. Just relax and rest. I'll do what I must. Good night, then. An eternity of sleep awaits you. In this nostalgic tree lochism. Shit, is that a bad ending? Not ending identify. Oh. Absolution took the offered hand. That's the, the achievement we got. Okay, right, well, good thing I saved. Oh, wait, that changed. All right, let's, let's not take his hand this time. We're divorcing him. No. <laughs> oh, wow, I fucked that one up. No. I... No. <laughs> I'm not like you. What? I was chosen. I uttered words not even I fully understood. My consciousness was still as hazy as ever. In my hand, I tightly grasped the gun left behind my senior. Its hardness made me snap back to my senses. I felt like I was holding his will. I looked ahead. Ooh, we have battle music! I'm hyped! Mamiya had left an opening, and I looked right at him. I am not like you. I have friends I talk to. Friends who came to my funeral. Even if what I do is the same as what Mamiya, what you do, I will make them happy. I am not like you. <laughs> After a brief silence, he let out a laugh. <laughs> Big words, Natsumi! I felt the very air tremble as a fierce gale blew at me. Huh? I blew away the darkness and the blood on me vanished. Clouds drifted ahead and with a small ray of light shining through, the moonlight from behind me ascended, accented Mamiya's outline. Oh shit! We got a boss! Oh god, here, chat. Uh, I'll give you time to do your shit. Do your screenies. Look at this man! He looks so whimsical. He is. Oh my god. This man. Mamiya. I ignored the gale and looked only at me. His eye, or his gaze, was stronger than ever before. In the same way you do things for them, I too have to meet their expectations. The moment he said that, the clouds vanished, exposing the moon. It shone with a golden tint, and felt as vast as Mamiya himself. A shared illusion. That is what we want. A shared illusion? Very well. If you think we're that different, I'm challenging you, Natsumi. Let's see whose desires come true. Mamiya grinned at me. Yeah. I couldn't lose this. I had to do all I could to win against this man. <gasps> Holy shit! He gets one too! Fuck yeah! 
I accept! No matter what you're plotting. No matter what you are. I... I'll use my iron will. To save the people from your treachery. You can take that as a promise. I will keep denying the world you desire. I'm challenging you, Mamiya! Mamiya, a shared illusion of the world's end. Oh shit. December, third Friday. So this is after um, the second Friday of when we were talking to Natsumi's friends. We're kind of, we're past all the pink house stuff. And please tell me this VOD's going on your YouTube. I forgot to screenshot. Yes. At, all the Mamiya VODs are up on YouTube. I think the last one I didn't post yet. But all of them should be up to date. Unless I missed one. I might have missed one. But it was a lot of filler stuff. It was a lot of Pink House content. Which, what the Pink House is, it's all Mamiya's friends. Um, who we finished all the storylines to yesterday. Which, big twist. I did not expect one of them to be assaulted and the other one to be a fucking serial killer um okay then <laughs> i look at them very differently now but all right <gasps> shit it's our trans kid she's back and not to me have you ever been to tokyo tower no i've always lived in tokyo and i did think about visiting it at least once though tokyo tower is one of japan's symbols i love huge buildings so i really like going there a lot you're pretty tall yourself. Is that why you like huge buildings? I just feel close to them, you know? We were going to Tokyo Tower as we talked. Last Friday, we all promised to hang out as friends. And everyone had actually gathered on time for this. Hmm. What are you so happy about, Natsume? Oh, I I'm just glad I got to meet you guys again. You're being weird. We can hang out whenever we want. Morichika actually visited my place the other day. He brought tons of rented DVDs. Not like you had anything better to do, right? I had homework to do the next day, but he rented, so we met... Oh, but he rented so many, we had to pull an all-nighter to finish them. And? I had him help me. Come on, kanji literature's easy. It pissed me off how fast he was. Aren't you glad I was there? Anyway... Don't be afraid to call us. In fact, put me on high priority. <laughs> Thanks. So I hear... Oh, thank you. Hey, don't look at it now. <gasps> Wait, are they still doing letters? <gasps> I need to get back home first, right? <gasps> yes, yeah, they're still doing letters! For those that don't know, when we looked at Rio's um, storyline, Rio ended up... Uh, sending letters to Soy every day. And they weren't allowed to look at them until they got home. Because Kaito... Or Keto, Kaito? Kaito? He was afraid of going home. And this was the only way to get him to go home. It's so cute that they still do this! <laughs> Natsumi, did you see that? Huh? Oh, no. Uh, sorry, I didn't intend to. Ryo and I actually exchanged letters. So Kaito talked to me in a whisper, making sure that Kikuchi Ryo wouldn't hear him. Letters? Yeah, I insisted on it, and he actually gave one to me. It turned into a habit. I see, that's wonderful. The fact they were also doing it in this what-if made me happy. Oh, right. Here's one to you. Huh? M me Surprised, I took the letter he gave me. Speaking of kanji literature, fun fact, the Power Ranger Samurai series has different kanji symbols. Ooh, nice, I did not know. C can I read it? Ah, uh, no, you need to read letters at home. <laughs> All right. Everyone seems to be having so much fun. Did my efforts push away Mamiya's impact a bit? What are you muttering? Uh, Kikuchi Ryo, uh, don't just sneak up on me like that. I didn't intend to. You didn't forget why we came here, right? Huh? Well, we're here to have fun and grow closer. No, were you even listening? Flowers. Flowers? We're getting flowers for Natsumi. You decided to give him flowers? That's good. No, 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 it's not decided yet. 
It's just that there are a lot of flowers, and if there's one that suits him perfectly, we might go with that. I've been thinking what flowers would be right for him, but... I figure that we should look around the flower shops here, too. Not just the ones where we live. I see. Flowers, huh? I can't wait. Hey, let's split up for now. We're gathering here in the evening. Oh, uh, hey, not to me. I hadn't told them that I didn't want to go to Tokyo Tower for mere sightseeing. The pink house where Arisugawa and the other three lived. According to the descriptions, it was somewhere around here. I observed them many times, but I hadn't met them even once. That night, I faced Mamiya and told him that I would save everyone. I now felt that I had to interact with them at least once. They seemed to be more intoxicated by Mamiya than my friends. For all I knew, they might just turn me away at the front door. Still, I'll do what I can. All right. I was able to find the scene of the prologue to their story. The cafe they entered to take shelter from the rain. That meant the place they lived at was also close. Hmm, it was probably... I followed my memory to walk where they had. I took out right at the drugstore with the frog in front of it, then turned left at the park and kept going straight. Was there always a convenience store here? I became somewhat worried. Well, convenience stores pop up all the time, I guess. It should be okay. Convincing myself, I continued to walk. However, I found something that didn't match my memory. Hmm. Am I really going the right way? But then I saw a temple that really stood out and became certain that I was on the right track. Alright, I just have to keep going forward. Huh? The pink house from my memory. It wasn't there. Instead, all I saw was a plot of land currently for sale. What? What? Why? I opened my eyes wide and looked around. The house ahead, as well as the neighboring ones, were all exactly as I remembered them. In that case, where on earth did they go? Oh, Natsumi, welcome back! Where have you been? As I returned with drooping shoulders, I was welcomed by Tojo Minato. I went to visit some acquaintances, but they weren't in. Oh? Did they move away? If they never mention it, that means you've just been cut off. You're not supposed to say that. How? It's okay. It's not like we agreed to meet. Thanks, guys. So, did you find any good flowers? <laughs> You'll know when you see them. Huh? We bought some. Here. Morichika handed me a plastic bag. Huh? They're in here. Let's see. I looked inside and found a whole bunch of handheld fireworks. But fireworks <laughs> That's exactly the reaction I expected from Natsumi. But 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 fla <sighs> these are fire! As we looked around, we passed by Don Quixot and saw these. Man, DQ's great. We also got a bucket. We're gonna light them now? We didn't come all the way here to do nothing. But fireworks are pretty loud. There's a park nearby. Let's do it there. Don't you want to create memories with us? That question was just so... You're being unfair. <laughs> Oh, wait, do we get a cute fireworks here? Yes! Oh my god! Look at how cute they all are! Also, Natsumi and Ryo need to switch spots! <laughs> I ship the Kaito Ryo shit. It's gotta happen. <laughs> but look at how pretty this is! I, little fellas, they are little fellas. I love the fucking artwork. All of the artwork in this game is so beautiful. Wow, amazing. It's so pretty. It's dry out, so things might catch fire. Be careful. Don't just stand there. Come closer. Here, take it. <laughs> I'll light it. Oh, I'll light it. That That's scary. Whoa. <laughs> Oh, there it goes. <laughs> what are you so scared of? Have you never lit handheld fireworks before? N no! 
but it's a pretty sight, isn't it? It, it sure is. I hesitantly looked up. Behind the colorful flames, the four of them were laughing. It's so pretty. I've always found winter prettier than summer. The air is clearer, too. I'm honestly surprised more people don't like it. But it's fun to be the only ones enjoying such colors in winter. It's too cold to catch on. Come on, you're a grown man. Stop playing with sparklers and move a little. You'll warm up. I don't want to move. Oh, I'd like to play with sparklers too. Seeing the thing in Morichika Haruki's hand piqued my interest. It didn't seem intense, so I could enjoy it rather casually. However, as a first-timer, I didn't really know how to light and enjoy sparklers. Thankfully, there was someone next to me who could help. Damn cold, why am I here in the middle of winter? Uh, um... Yeah? Would you like to light some sparklers with me? What? <laughs> nah, like hell. <laughs> alright, alright, come here. Th thank you! It's my first time with handled fireworks, so I'm not sure how to play with them. I never really got to play with fireworks either. When I was a brat, I was told not to breathe in smoke. It's a good thing you can play with fireworks now. It is. This is my first time too. They're prettier than I imagined. I'm also glad I got to light them with all of you. That's so. I'd been going in and out of the hospital. You? When you were a child? I can't even imagine. Oh yeah? I barely even went to elementary school because of that. When I was in middle school, I got so sick. I got hospitalized for a long time. I hated that. I still do. Boring days. The feeling that you're being left behind. It sucks. But there was one exception. I was only about 15. A certain nurse changed everything about me. She was crazy beautiful. But at the same time, something just wasn't right about her. I could easily put her in first place amongst the most beautiful woman I ever saw. That wasn't all. She was hiding something under that refined face of hers. It felt as though she was clawing at my heart. Mayuri! <gasps> it's Nagaki! Starting today, I'll be the nurse in charge of you. Let's get along, okay? Sure. I'll change the IV. It was night at the hospital. The smell of sterilizer was the only thing I could pick up. It was always like this. As the night advanced, my cost would gradually worsen. <laughs> <laughs> it was painful. I grabbed the sheets and clenched my teeth, but my violent coughing still wouldn't abate. The darkness had come for me. The pain and the sadness were like waves. They came, then retreated. I couldn't breathe. I was gonna die. Die. Haruki, are you okay? Oh, then that lonely darkness. My nurse began stroking my back. It, it hurts. Here's an inhaler. <laughs> you seem better. That's a relief. Thank, thank you very much. Call me if you need me again. She stroked my back again. I was finally able to sleep. Ah. Uh, I walked around the hallway, dragging my IV around. Behind the corner, I saw my nurse. Her beauty had the magic to attract attention even from this distance. Apparently, she was talking business with the doctor. Or was she? The more I watched, the less certain I was. Her alluring mannerisms, the movement of her lips. Were they really talking business? The person she was talking to seemed to be really attracted to her. Feeling like I was watching something I shouldn't have been, I quickly went back the way I came. You were watching, weren't you? <laughs> watching what? You don't need to hide it. I'm also interested in you. I knew it from the moment I saw you. 
She brought her face closer to mine. Her eyes were the color of a rich, loving whisper, and they were right in front of me. As she moved, she released the smell of sterilizer. It was a pure scent reminiscing of death and resignation. You understand what I mean, right? I like the color of your eyes. Nagaki, Mayuri is fine. Light purple loneliness, I understand it as well. The nurse, Mayuri, smiled. Your loneliness, the discomfort you felt about me, treasure them, Haruki. After that, the nurse, Naz Nagaki, began showing me express expressions she hadn't given anyone else. I didn't know why this adult woman was so interested in a brat like me. However, I felt that she needed me. You have a handsome face, so let me tell you of an easy way to live. An easy way to live? Seducing people is laughably easy. I love doing it. Oh my god! Is Nagaki the reason why he's a man whore? No! Are you the reason why he... He goes wo woman to woman just for a place to live. Okay, I'm starting to like you a little less now, Mayuri. What the fuck? You ruined our boy! <laughs> All you do is use your body, and people act the way you want them to. Also, you're talking to a 15-year-old like that. That's kind of weird. She chuckled as she said that. I gulped. I'd always been waiting for something like this. For colors besides white. Colors that would arouse me. I'll charge- I'll change the IV, Haruki. I had several nurses and a different one had arrived to care for me today. As she bent forward to change my IV, I took her hand. Mm hmm? Haruki? She was confused for a moment. A few seconds passed and then... I kissed the back of her hand. Hey, stop playing around. Playing around? Is that what it looked like? But I'm always serious. I was showing affection to a woman I didn't care about. Haruki is a man whore? Oh, you haven't been here since the beginning. Uh, <laughs> so Haruki, ever, ever since I'm assuming he was young, he has been using his looks to get what he wants. He has a gambling addiction. He uses whatever money he can find to gamble it all away. And because of that, he's homeless. He seduces women mainly a girl named akio or aki Ak yeah akio um and he'll just have sex with them just for a place to sleep and a place to eat um usually he'll take a lot he'll like use them up for their money's worth promising to give them money back and then never does but they can't resist his good looks so honestly this kind of makes sense for why mayuri is so nice to him because Mayuri was grown, like, was raised to be a prima donna. She was raised to be a model, to appreciate her looks, to never take her looks for granted, and to use them to her the fullest ability, or to the fullest capability. And when Mamiya had entered her life, she had finally lost, like, herself, and just started using her body. To get what she wanted. Just so he could look her way. Which is really sad. That that's what she's passing on to him. But. It's interesting in a way. Like I'm assuming all of these stories are going to relate to each other now. And it's going to be really sad. Oh shit. I clicked the button. I clicked the button I shouldn't have clicked. I felt completely absorbed by this contradictory feeling clawing at my heart. And as the nurse had told me, and did such things with any woman I met. Don't tell me that Haruki's the ultimate man whore if he were in the Dangarampa universe. I don't know what the universe is like there. Um, if you ever want to watch all the VODs, though, all of the VODs, like, since the beginning, are all posted on YouTube in the VODs. It's on a playlist in order, if anyone ever wants to, like, check it out, look at the stories. Usually I recap in a lot of them, so there's a lot of repeated information. Uh, just so y'all know. Eventually, all the nurses that knew me would gleam with excitement every time they saw me. Seducing people is laughably easy. I love doing it. All you do is use your body, and people will act the way you want them to. I spent a lot of time at hospitals, and reading was about the only pastime I had. 
So what I was doing now felt like playing with fire. It was so fulfilling. It changed my view on life. Haruki, I, um... I know. I didn't care if they misunderstood my intentions. I just wanted them to do the same for me. See? You can do it. Women succumb to beautiful things quite easily. Isn't it usually the other way around? I hear you're really popular. Oh? But the ones wearing jewels are always the queens, aren't they? In spite of all that, this woman... I felt that I would never have her. Mayuri, what should I do next? Mayuri? <laughs> I like the sound of that. I feel like I can stay myself when I'm around you. I wonder why. When she said that, the way she smiled finally made me realize what it was that I felt about her. We're alike. We both understand. We're both drowning in different kinds of loneliness. Next thing I knew, she gently took my hand. Yeah. We may be of different kinds, but you and I are indeed the same. Age no longer mattered here. Oh, that's gross. There was only a boy and a girl. No, not even gender mattered anymore. We were mere humans and we exchanged something that no words could describe. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, that's just perfume? Okay. Perfume is best when it's only just strong enough to seep into the other person's brain without them even noticing. The devilish scent. Made me finally understand how I should be. Ever since then, I'd always been using the same perfume. Um, are you still in touch with her? No, I was discharged soon after. Stuff happened. But I feel like I'll meet her again soon. Sorry for the boring story. Look, um, they're waiting. Oh, yeah, thanks. The fire of the sparklers had already been reduced to nothing but ash. Alright, until next week. It'll be the last time. Let's gather at the church again. The city's moon rained a mechanical light upon us. We... Our eyes were briefly burned by the dazzling stars. The rapid flow of the ages was whittling us away. Don't die. Please, don't die. When did this begin? Since when had I started closing my eyes so often? Morichika Haruki. Hojo Minato. Kikuchi Ryo. Soi Kaito. They... They were all earnestly doing their best to face their own worlds. If you die, what will happen to the futures that would have awaited you? And what will happen to those you leave behind? Most people thought it right to do everything perfectly. And that made us lose something important. It was the intense, brilliant movement of the heart. That was above any passing trends. I once again looked up at the cold moon. Oh. How I want them to be happy. After Morichika Haruki had told me his story about Mayuri, I asked him, hold on, did all that happen recently? He replied with no, it happened when I was 16. Unmatched beauty. It was fair to assume that this Mayuri person was the same Nagaki I knew. However, from what I assume based on his story, it was at a different time than the story I was observing. It was either Nagaki's past or future, and if it happened in the same time frame as when Morichika Haruki was 16, then... No, I'm lost. I needed to consult it. I began walking towards the dark door, but immediately froze up. Right, right. He was gone. I need to do this by myself. I need to keep his and the librarian's words in mind. Holding the gun I had at my side, I scanned my memory as hard as I could. So why is Tojo Minato trans and why did they transition from two? So they are a boy that wants to be a girl. It's kind of hinted at that because uh, her storyline 
is that she pretends to be a girl. Um, and it, she was originally doing it for extra cash, but then that started to feel more like her. And she was scared about what people would think if they found out that was her true identity. Which they did so well hinting at that in the story. I love it. I love her story. She's probably one of my favorites out of the main four when it comes to their stories. But when it comes to the pink house, I think Same has my favorites. I love the unhinged twist they gave him. And I his story's so fucked up. I love it. The story of those peoples from the pink house and the stories of my friends who came to my funeral. I had always believed them to be different perspectives or possibilities, but that wasn't right. They were connected in a different way. Not by space, but time. Suddenly, a flicker went through my vision. Are the two possibilities mixed because of a two co uh, oh, because of a common term? Blood escaped my nose, but I failed to even notice it. Instead, I continued flipping through the book as my heart rate escalated. At first, I thought that the common point was Mamiya. But what if there's another one? Which part of the setting connected all the stories? Found it. Tokyo. During which the year the world was prophesized to end. I gulped. The story doesn't state the exact year. The year in which the world was prophesized to end. The two years were connected by the key known as Mamiya, creating a mixed story. Knowing just as much is enough to show me several possibilities. As if to keep me from getting too excited, I heard my senior's voice in my head. In your world, which years were generally connected to the apocalypse? Wh well, the most famous prophecy is the one from Nostromus, which pointed at the year 1999. As for something more recent... There's the Mayan calendar-based idea that mankind would end in 2012. If this is possible, it has to be these two. My voice echoed through the silence of the room. So wait! The story about those people at the cafe were not from 2012, but 1999? I stood in place, hanging my head low. There was no one to answer my question. However, I felt like it all made sense now. How could I have been so wrong? When the blood from my nose dribbled onto the desk, I snapped back to my senses and quickly wiped my face. I see. So we have two dates for the world's end. There's the time axis of Nagaki's group and the time axis of Morichika Haruki's group. And every time I open the book, there's a 50-50 chance of getting either story. I made a fist with the same hand I used to wipe my face. If the story of the cafe took place in the past, the year 1999, a story from the year 1999. I mumbled that as I opened the book. Um... A young man in a school uniform, sitting by the window, suddenly spoke up. The other three looked at him with bored expressions. Why not introduce ourselves? We don't even know each other's names. Oh, introductions. I suppose you're right. The spectacle man slowly spoke up and fixed his posture. The young man found his black eyes dull. They reminded him of puddles. I'm Arisugawa Osamu. I work as a children novelist. Oh, that's Toma, not the other dude. Sorry. I'm Morichika Toma, a student. Wait, are you like Morichika's cousin or father? I think I said this when we first met him. I think he might be the dad. But then the years don't make sense either. Because if we're going by 1999 and 2012, that's 13 years. So, no, it's not possible. He's got to be like a cousin or something. Or like an uncle or a brother. I'm Morichika Toma, a student. I'm Sam Satoru. I'm a police officer. I'm Nagaki Mayuri, also a student. Once they'd all introduced themselves, silence returned to the room. Be gone, ants! What would you say to some reminiscing? The suggestion came from the tallest man. Reminiscing about what? What else? Mamiya, of course. I knew it! 
The story of the people from the pink house takes place in 1999. Years before the story of my friends. I'm slowly getting an understanding of this. The story so far flashed before my eyes. The events at the pink house were in the past. Now that I knew that, things that I had understood before suddenly made sense. It explained why the pink house wasn't there. It answered all the questions I had when listening to their stories while we played with fireworks. I'd gotten the time all wrong. I took a firmer hold of the book in my hand. That means the story is a mix of the years 1999 and 2012. Tokyo. During the year in which the world was prophesized to end. That giant knot tied together two stories into a single one. I'd taken a huge step towards the truth, and that filled me with hope. I wasn't able to grasp the full picture of this story, but now I finally understand. I might be able to set the story's true course now. As the story progressed and I talked to Mamiya, the world quickly blacked out, and a gust of wind rushed up from below. Huh? On top of a skyscraper. The Mamiya Yumahisha. I've been waiting for you. To read this far. Mamiya. The wind was strong, and it blew right between us. He didn't try to move. I wasn't moving either. There was no need. We were looking only at each other, completely forgetting the lights of the building below. You made your decision? That's why I want you to watch this. Don't say a word until the end. And watch that path my friends chose. Chapter 8 Oh no. The new century rolled in. The four of them were still living at that pink house near Tokyo Tower. Even after they all share stories about me. So it's... Tw it's 2010 now. It's 2010. Two years? Because it said the new century. They'd only just learned that their Mamiyas were different from those of the others. If Mamiya was no more than an illusion. If the Mamiya I saw back then wasn't even real. I... I was drinking beaker warm tea all by myself? Oh no, n never mind. it's still 1999. Wait, um, I remember there was a seven. It was on the right, I think. Oh. I got it wrong. Go on, Mamiya, it's your turn. Oh? It was right next to it? <sighs> That's so annoying. We played enough concentration and enough old maid too. Is there any card games you're bad at? So the resolution I'd discover and told him about. It dispersed into nothingness without reaching anyone? The meteors sure are taking their time. A cassette tape? It's rare for you to bring music. What? <laughs> it's not classical? No. <laughs> I like pop music, too. Yeah, it's a good one. I like its gentle melody. Huh? A meteor? Wh where I didn't see it. Where is it? <laughs> so the love and salvation I gained from him were all just a type of self-consolation? Alright, Mamiya. Today's dinner is roast cob meat beef mili fuel. Vegetables? I tend to not eat any. I feel like they would turn my insides green and make me unhealthy. I prepare a liche sorbet for dessert. Could you have that? No, I don't have any preferences. This is all a matter of principle. Anyway, let's eat. Oh? No, Mamiya. I didn't change the subject. Those mundane little chats we had. The feeling of her hands. The smoke in the air. None of it existed. It just... I was doing a solo performance. Hey, read this. Can't you tell just by looking? It's Ari Sugawa Osamu's latest work. It's a newborn baby I hadn't even brought to the editor yet. You dumbass. Shouldn't that be obvious? I wanted you to be the first to read it. Come on, don't make me spell it out for you. So... Did my new work meet your expectations? <laughs> Why? 
Why am I the weirdo? I just wanted to be with her. I just wanted the world to know that Mamiya existed. To prove that I wasn't alone. But even if something like that is too much to ask, then is there really any point in making this world a better place? Is there anyone even worth saving? If the world insists on being like this... Arisugawa Osama's silhouette trembled. He took a knife from the kitchen. I... And aimed it at his own chest. And then his arm. Stop! Let me go! Stop it. Let me go, damn it! I won't. Arisugawa! <laughs> What kind of stupidity is this, Arisugawa? I won't let you die. Why? We're not close enough for you to care, are we? Because it's unfair. You're trying to get closer to Mamiya. And I'm not letting you do that by yourself. Within the dim light, their eyes gleamed with unshakable conviction. At this moment, I understood the true meaning behind this place. They were actually observing each other. They watched, so that none of them would try to get ahead and grow closer to Mamiya. That none of them would go to the Tree Lucism. They had nowhere to go. Yet they tried to live in this harsh world. Doing the best they could to uphold Mamiya's teachings. However, ideals were just that. Ideals. They couldn't share the eternity that was Mamiya. Yeah. Mamiya wouldn't allow that. To die and run away from this world, I mean. She didn't take us to the tree lochism after all. We have to stay in this world. This hell. And fulfill our mission. Mission, huh? We need to prove that Mamiya existed. This is what this place is supposed to be about. We can't say something that naive at this point. Our true desire has always been the same. We want to meet Mamiya again. Mamiya, let's talk about what we should do next. Let's look at the rules again. Oh, so pretty. I love Ari. Ari, Ari Sugawa's design. Genuinely one of my favorites, and I am biased because that is the design of literally my old model. Uh... <laughs> I feel like Arisugawa, Toma, Nagaki, and Same are about to all go all ultimate despair from Chapter Six every Danganronpa game. I know nothing about Danganronpa, so I have no clue. <laughs> uh, I will not understand any Danganronpa reference, but they uh, I fucking love all their designs, match their personality so much. Also, I just realized Nagaki kind of looks like um Eeb, uh, from the game literally called Eeb. <laughs> Very good. Ultimate Despair is basically going insane. Ah, okay, I see, I see. Yes, yes. I believe that shared illusion would spread. I believe that the Mamiya born within me would spread every time I interacted with someone. But that hasn't happened to a single person. There'd be no future for us if we just stayed here and observed each other. Mamiya would be one day disappeared for real. No. Mamiya existed, and my memories with him are real. So, why? Why should my memories stop existing? Just because Mamiya didn't. I... I'm scared. I don't want to... I don't want all my change and growth to become something that never happened. I don't want to forget Mamiya either. But there's only so much we can do. We can will Mamiya into existence like a shared illusion. But eventually, we would snap out of it and think, what am I even doing? I feel so empty. It's like I'm eating the hole in a donut. You're so normal. You're far more normal than the rest of us. No. That's just wrong. If I was, I'd be able to escape this house. I met many people. However, even if they had flesh... This world is full of humans who are truly worthless. Is it so wrong to long for Mamiya? Is... Is it wrong... To yearn for an illusion? 
Why not just let people do what they want? There's nothing wrong in coming to like someone. What's keeping Toma sane? What's pressuring Sa Sanjima? What could it be? Objective... Objectivity. It's objectivity that makes us so pitiful. Mamiya existed our, in our subjectivity. But objectively, I was just chatting with myself. Yeah, it must have been weird. But I want to look at all the people who think we're a bunch of lunatics playing with illusions and ask them. That close friend you always hang out with and know and trust with all your heart. What if you found out that he didn't exist beyond your subjective reality? Would he be able to simply accept the tomorrow he wouldn't be a part of? And the yesterday from which he vanished? I was simply afraid. Crazy. <laughs> Am I really the one who's crazy? It's a society that makes fun of us that's crazy. We want them to know what we felt. We'll make Mamiya exist. We'll make them love Mamiya. And then make them des despair that Mamiya didn't exist. To that end, the eternal Mamiya. No. There's a limit to what we can do. It's beyond the four of us. We would have to increase the amount of people who know Mamiya. But... But how? Mamiya doesn't exist in this world anymore. There's no one who can meet them now. It would have been simpler if we ended up as Mamiya did. We met our end without achieving anything. There was a mistake in our methods. There's no need to change that message. What's important is who that message will reach and how it'll reach them. What? No. Our will isn't wrong. We're just doing it the wrong way. Our stories don't work on people who are stained by objectivity, by society. We need to target children instead of adults. Are you saying that Mayuri only talked to ha Haruki because she wanted Mamiya to exist for him? Is that why? Wait, that's why Mamiya is a nurse for him. Because he thinks of Mayuri. So all of the Mamiyas are based on... They're based on these guys. So that theory was correct. We did, we did reach that theory a while ago. I'm assuming Samjima is only invisible to Kaito, though, because he's just not there in his life. He's kind of like that secret dad that he probably wanted. Because Samjima actually already knew Kaito. Um, he, he showed up in Kaito's story as a, the police officer that takes him to the hospital. So I was very excited to see him again in, in the pink house. And instead of getting an audience as big as my reader base, we need to target only a few. Without any dispersion and maximum focus, we should face a single person as sincerely as we can and cultivate a potent shared illusion. When we do that, we'll surely... Arisugawa, what are you saying? Can we save Mamiya like that? Would our Mamiya not disappear? Or would someone develop a mutual understanding with them? Again, Mamiya's gone! How would we? It's simple, Nagaki. We ourselves have to become Mamiya. Yeah, they become Mamiyas. We would become a Mamiya that couldn't be ended by some half-baked feeling. T Toma. Become Mamiya? How? We tried so hard. What can we do to... We will discard everything. Oh, we will discard everything. Those words finally made me understand. We still had something holding us back. And that is despite the fact that that something is nothing compared to Mamiya. Discard everything and become Mamiya. Okay. I like it. That's really good. If that's what it takes to bring Mamiya back from the Trilochism, I'll take it. And then it's decided. Through me, who became host to Mamiya, we will plant Mamiya into children. And we would once again make Mamiya complete. This is our... That is the mission of those left behind in this world. This hell. I only want to fix it. This crumbling shared illusion. It will never break again. 
It will be an eternal shared illusion. Hey, Natsumi. You and I are different, right? Mamiya smiled. Show me, then. Show me an ending to your friend's story that's different from mine. It seemed as self-derisive, but I couldn't read the emotion in a smile. I could do nothing but watch. Stop. I couldn't interfere. Stop it! I... Stop! <gasps> I couldn't stop them. Oh. Presented by- wait, is this like an opening or an ending? Oh! Oh, there's our boy! <laughs> Shared illusion. Holy shit! So basically everyone gave up their lives to... Put the thought of Mamiya into everyone's head. This can't be done. Without madness. We are insane. <laughs> this is good. It's how it has always been. We were insane from the start. From the moment we met Mamiya. Society! Society is collapsing! From the moment we were born into this world. People were always driven. By an indescribable madness. Let's... Eat Mamiya? Who is the one to suggest that? No one could tell at this point. However, everyone present was overcome by a powerful urge to eat Mamiya. They... they believed that it was the only way for people who didn't fulfill Mamiya's will to become Mamiya themselves. A chokingly sweet scent. The surge of sheer malice can make people cover their mouths and close their eyes. Can we appreciate the music? Holy shit. I love this. Mamiya has never disappointed me with their, like, music choice. And this is added- this is going in my playlist. Like, holy shit. The smells seem to turn my brain stiff. Surrounded by misty rain and isolation, we labored. Oh my god. We ate. Wow. Oh wait, is this Ari Sugawa? Really Sorry. See? You made me fucking bald during the, a very sad scene. Win. How dare you. Yes, queen! Ravenous gluttony. <laughs> Lonely palpitations. We ate. The mist was dense. Pride leads to worship. Prayers and powerless mounds of corpses. The mist was dense. The blade slowly cut through the meat. Cut. Slice. Rip. Some were excited. Others looked away. Which one was me, some wondered. Was this how it would end up? This had always been how it was. Thorough preparations. Detailed tactics. Such things to no chance against pure desire. Who am I? Who am I? Who am I? It felt as if the moist parts of the body were being covered in rust. Could I move? Was my stomach still working? Did I still have a jaw? Or teeth? A tongue? Lips? Was the change already over? One couldn't help but wonder. There was only the sound of chewing. It was like a song. It went off tune. Then synced. Then mixed. Nothing but chewing. It wasn't enough. There was no such thing as purity. One's own vision snuck from up behind. Would the sweetness become heat and embrace us? No. Even that was uncertain. Or perhaps... Oh my god. Everything was an illusion. 
leave not a bit behind. The bones. The flesh. The blood. The poison. We split it evenly. Not a drop is left. We ate even our plates. Our cells are changing. We can't turn back now. Someone was crying. No one knew if it was them or someone else. Everything mixed. The border between oneself and the others had vanished. Amia is... The moon. The magic. The mystery. The mimic. The medium. The mother. And me. We are now... Mamiya. So our theory was right! They are Mamiya! Mayuri, the nurse. So, Haruki, I'll tell you something only you will know. My real name. Your real name? Mamiya. Call me, Mamiya. Th this This is just a cult! Even so, to them, it's justice. There's no objectivity here! Objectivity doesn't exist. <laughs> it's high time you understood this, Natsumi. Objectivity is something only happy people, who have never been hurt, can preach. Huh? Huh? To those who have lost their way and are deeply hurt, objectivity is unnecessary. Do you get it, Natsumi? They found my existence necessary. And thus the illusion is allowed for their sake. Mamiya slowly closed his eyes. He was someone I could never forgive. But his silence made it seem like he was praying, leaving me unable to speak up. Natsumi. We really are different. For their sake, I... Mia will become a shared illusion. <gasps> oh. So Hari Sugawa and the others. The ones from 1999 were Mamiya itself? In that case, my friends all died because of them. I have to calm down. <coughs> I have to find a way to distance Mamiya from my friends. And Mamiya appeared because of a mix-up in their time access. Conclusions and truth that were set in stone never leave any space for delusions. In that case, I have to destroy it. I have to kill the margin of error. While I gathered my resolve, the day before the fourth Friday came, my friends were waiting for tomorrow with various expressions on their faces. Why didn't I notice that Mamiya had heterochromia? Ever all the Mamiyas have heterochromia. Um, or most of them do. Any version that looks like Mamiya itself, like the Mamiya, has heterochromia. Um, also, Toma, his appearance, it, the Mamiya that we see is heavily based off Toma. Because Toma, or Tojima, sorry, to Tojima? The trans character. The appearance of Mamiya is heavily based off of her appearance. Um, cause she also has heterochromia. In the same eyes. Chapter 9. What's wrong, Haruki? Ugh. Hey, so when are you coming over? I'll make some dinner for you. Sorry, but I don't think I'll be able to drop by today. H Haruki? Look, I'll make it up to you some other time. I realize no one else would forgive this kind of stuff, though. That's so unfair. All I can do is say okay to that. I'm sorry. See ya. Morichika Haruki ended the call, lay down on the sofa, and looked up. Tomorrow. He took out a cigarette and moved it over his lighter's flickering red flame. After slowly exhaling, he looked outside the window. The wound left by a scratch from a few days ago still ached a little. What to put into the casket, huh? A large moon sat upon the sky above. Strangely enough, he didn't feel cold. The night was calm, with little warmth to be had. Well, I guess I can dedicate nights like this to just you. I 
I've been waiting all this time. The battery died a long time ago, but... This is Natsumi's phone. I didn't give it to the police or even his family. This is nothing more than a phone held by just another maid in Akiba Akihabara. That ends today. I won't have to feel like this ever again. Tojo Minato slowly opened the door of his closet. There was a maid outfit with a long skirt on one of the hangers. He gently touched its edges. Natsumi, you'll stay in my heart until the very end. The moon lit up Tojo Minato's face through the window. Bathed in its pale light, her outlines looked positively androgynous. Or there are they them? I don't know. <laughs> I thought my clothes would still be too big, but they look good on you. Oh. He's so cute! Are you making fun of me? Huh? No, you do actually look great. I hope your clothes finish drying soon. You can use mine until then. Oh, Kaito. Oh, uh, hello. Oh my, you're all wet. Go take a bath. But I... It's okay, just do it. Go on in. Oh, Kaito. You brought a friend over? Welcome back, Dad. This is Ryo. My name is Kikuchi Ryo. Pardon the intrusion. <laughs> Welcome. Go on and eat as much as you like. Okay. Kaito grows every time he eats. It's funny. So I always make too much food. There's more than enough for you. Don't hold back. Ugh, Mom. This is the guest room. Feel free to use it. No, I think I'll just leave. Huh? But... I'm worried about Midori. Oh. So sorry I was a bit too excited by the idea of you coming over and... I didn't even think about that. It's okay. It's the thought that counts. Um, your mom's cooking. It, it was amazing. I can't praise her enough. Ah, oh, thanks. I'll pass it on. She'll be really happy. You're welcome to come over anytime. Also, this got all wet, but you can still read it. Oh, a letter. Reply whenever you feel like it. Okay. Good night, Rio. Take care, Rio. You can eat this at home if you'd like. Th thanks. The food was delicious. Thank you. Is that who you're trying to say the name of that Mamiya Yumahashi is heavily based off? Yes. Yes, yes. I actually have drawings of Tojo, because I, I used to draw them uh, with their storyline of how they didn't they didn't feel like themselves. Because I thought it was such a it was such an interesting storyline. Hmm. I like Midori. You get to know this too. Tokyo. During the year in which the world was prophesized to end. The final month. The fourth Friday. December 4th, Friday. The temperature was 5 degrees Celsius with cloudy skies. The paving below my shoes was tough, just as my resolve for the night. Beyond the tree-lined street were the ones who'd come to Natsumi Sochiroi's funeral. They were waiting for me. Ah, uh, they're so somber! But so fine! Look at them! They're all wearing, like, um, uh, like, funeral attire, except Kaito. Kaito's just in a school uniform. I like that to uh, Tojo, though, always looks androgynous. Like, I genuinely like that detail. It is such an interesting one. Smash, to be honest, yeah. Puh. The harsh northern winds of December blew mercilessly around us. Even so, they were my friends. We're here for this day, facing it with different expressions. They were here in this year, the world was prophesied the end. To end. To conclude their story with Natsumi Soichiro. Let's go, Natsumi. <sighs> like a few weeks ago, we entered the now familiar church. There were other people around too, members of the Natsumi family, as well as their acquaintances. Um, I thought we'd just be laying Natsumi's ashes to rest. Is there someone else's funeral going on here? No, there's gonna be a memorial mass for Natsumi. A memorial mass? 
Thirty days after someone's death, Catholics hold a memorial mass to reminisce about the deceased. Until then, the remains are kept on the altar before being buried after the mass. So, this is your final chance to say goodbye to him. Okay, let's sit down. We all sat down, some rows behind the family in the front. This is a stark change from the first time, when we were all separated. It was clear how much our relationship had changed over the past few weeks. It's changed quite a bit. I looked at my own remains on the altar, and spoke to myself. Many things remain the same in this world even after I died. But who could have imagined that my friends, who barely knew each other, would all gather like this? The memorial mass was held in silence. The family gave their greetings and eulogies. It wasn't too difficult for my funeral. The organ echoed across the church as it released an awkward-sounding melody. I looked straight ahead. Hey, Natsumi. It's okay. You can relax and sleep. Even if I'm gone, they'll be able to go on. All souls that believe in God are eventually summoned before him, where they attain peace. As those left behind, we can do nothing but pray for the departed and vow never to forget them. There will be memorial masses in the year that follow. Let us gather here again and pray for them. The event ended, and we all moved to the cemetery for the burial. As we walked, I called out to a certain someone. Hello. Oh, Natsumi, you came. Of course. It was Natsumi Soichiro's mother. I was really surprised when I read the letter you gave me on the day of the funeral. I apologize for that. I must have been perplexing for a stranger like me to appear out of nowhere. Oh, no, not at all. Why didn't you find me suspicious? We didn't even talk while he was alive. You're such a rose friend. I could tell from that look in your eyes. There was a warm light in them, just like in his. Let me see. I cast my gaze downwards to hide my face and fall silent. I was no match for my mother. I cleared my damp throat to plate off. She chuckled a little. Are they Soichiro's friends too? Yeah, they decided on something for him to take to the next life. I see. I had no idea he had so many friends. He never had anyone over at the house. She smiled, clearly pleased. Embarrassed, I fell silent again. I'm relieved though. I'm glad there are people besides us who will remember him. I'm so glad. Soichiro. The public cemetery was in an open area some distance away from the church. Various graves were lined up in a clouded area sprinkled in green. We stopped in front of one. It was like all the others, lacking any distinguishing features. And it belonged to Natsumi Soichiro. In other words, me. This is Soichiro. Oh, this is Soichiro. My mother stood before them and showed them the urn. They all gulped, and I watched over them from a short distance away. My goal here was to merely watch them decide what to give Natsumi. Perhaps they chose different things compared to what they had picked in the stories. However, I decided not to pry into that. After all, they weren't meant for me. But for the Natsumi Soichiro in the urn. After confirming that they were done, I took a deep breath. This is the final goodbye. No one said anything. We all waited for everyone to finish their silent conversations with Natsumi. Goodbye, Natsumi Soichiro. After that, the grave was closed. We stared in complete silence at the grave where Natsumi had been laid to rest. A breeze blew past us. Our clothes and hair were disheveled. Yet, Natsumi's grave stood still. The soft, bare skin of the stone had his name and date of death carved into it. The year was... It was done. My job for the past few weeks was now over. Everyone was particularly silent. We didn't feel like going back. So we did as someone had suggested and we went to the nearby beach. So it's over. It really hasn't sunk in yet. <laughs> yeah. The days promised by Natsumi's note were over. Starting tomorrow, we wouldn't have our weekly gatherings anymore. We were now strangers who might never see each other again. Let's meet up every now and then. 
Like the priest said, there will be memorial masses in the coming years, too. Yeah, that is true. It's Natsumi's memorial mass. Guess we'll have to go. I don't mind if they use Natsumi as the reason. If they gather like this over the next few years and beyond. If they all supported each other. Only good things could come of it. Guys. And of course, I'm expecting you to come to, me to the meetups as well, Natsumi. Yeah. The story was nearing its end. Once the ending began to roll, the spectator would be unable to see what happened next. Even so... Sure. Let's meet again. With smiles on our faces. There you go again, making it sound like the more of a big deal than it is. Oh man, if only it snowed a little. It'd be the best kind of miracle for a day like this. I stood tall on the ground. I looked at the back of the transient man and shouted as hard as I could. I'm finally here, Mamiya! My voice made him slowly turn around. He was distant, and his messy hair hid his expression. I can end this December, this year, without having any of them die. If we make it past this without any problem, they'll make it to the next year without anyone dying. I poured more strength into my grip. I might not be here beyond this point. Like you said, I might leave them behind. However, that'll be able to support each other. Oh, they'll be able to support each other. I pictured their smiles. There's a happy future waiting for them, even if I'm not there. I didn't mind being left out of the circle. I truly didn't. As long as it was a future that they were smiling, I was okay with it. This is the optimal ending I've created. Mamiya remained silent, as though trying to gauge my value. But after a while, he, gran he grinned and began clapping. Wonderful. I'm impressed that you made it this far. Mm. His reaction shocked me enough to make me step back. Take a step back. You weren't taken by the charm of the illusion and expressed your will. The idea that reality is right and wonderful. Excellent work. Especially for someone who doesn't even have a body in here. Your words can no longer hurt me. Oh, but I was praising you. He sounded a pleased chuckle. I thought you would have given up already. No, we were leading you to do that. And yet, you mustered up enough nonsensical determination and made it all the way here, even though it wasn't necessary at all. You should have just been a spectator. Don't make me repeat myself. I'm not like you. Indeed. You're not like me. So go and decide the true course of the story. Huh? How? No. How do you know about that? Only a few people should have this information. How do you know about true courses? Oh, indeed. Maybe because I'm a spectator myself? Or perhaps something above that? Well, what do you think? <sighs> it's irrelevant, isn't it? Regardless of what I am, the things you can do are limited. I couldn't allow him to take control of the conversation. I had to keep my true- I had to keep true to my will. You're right. I will save them. No matter what you are. I'll set the years so I can surpass it. Create the future you desire and the records you believe are correct. Decide the year in which the world was prophesied to end. Allow me to tell you about the true job of a spectator. The setting of the true course of the story. I had already explained the stories that are only slightly different are what-ifs, something akin to drafts. There are quite many of them, but there is only one true story. And drawing it up is simple. You merely have to discard the many possibilities you've seen so far. Take only one in hand, and declare it as truth. Once the true course is decided, it cannot be erased. The story showed you many possibilities, didn't it? However... You will be one making the ultimate choice. I... will decide. Oh! We're disappearing, chat! Oh, look at that! Tokyo. During the year in which the world is prophesied to end. It is this year. 
2012. There you have it. If I'm being honest here, I'm trying to think that Mamiya could have go and eat himself for all not to be cares. I honestly like his character. And lastly, the goodbye to Natsumi. December 28th, 2012. Here lies Natsumi Soichiro. Natsumi? Natsumi? Huh? I'm so relieved. You finally came back to your senses. You didn't respond no matter, no matter how many times I called out. I was worried. Uh, oh, sorry. Wait, what's the time? What year is it? Huh? It's obviously 2012. What a relief. I actually... Uh... Wait, wait, Natsumi, what's wrong? Don't just start crying like that. Hey, don't wipe your face on my clothes. <laughs> I'm so glad. I... I finally did it. I saved everyone. I'm not sure what this is about, but you seem to have worked really hard, Natsumi. So good job. Thank you. Thank you. After crying my eyes out, I calmed down and finally looked around. Huh? Where's Kikuchi Ryo and Soi Kaito? Oh, they went off somewhere. So it was all about going to the sea, and Kikuchi went with. Oh, now they are. Morichika Haruki pointed at two figures. I'll go talk to them for a second. Overwhelmed with joy, I ran across the beach. Are you cold? I'm fine, honestly. I'm just glad you came. I feel... kind of strange. Because of everything that's happening today? No, well, I mean... It does feel almost unreal that I managed to come this far. But the month I spent with you guys was unlike anything else I've ever experienced. I'm beyond excited to keep things going like this. The letter. Hmm? I forgot to write a reply to the letter. It's fine. Are you sure? Yeah. I mean, we can meet up anytime. You're right. Thanks. I actually did write a response to the letter. But I was having troubles putting my thoughts into words. Nothing I wrote came out right. I kept erasing things over and over again, until the paper got too wrinkled to write on. My drawer is filled to the broom with unfinished letters now. I think I was in a panic. I thought I'd never see you again, Ryo. I thought the world would end and we'd never meet again. Soy, raise your face. Hmm? Look into my eyes. Listen, the world won't end that easily. And we'll always get to meet each other again. People worry about the future all the time, but here's what I've got to tell you. Let's meet up again. You see, I like the way you look at the world. So I want you to keep on sharing your world with me. Ryo. In return, I'll protect. Protect what? You. From harsh words. From pointless conflict. From cutting blades. I will make sure to protect you. That's what I promised in my previous letter. I see. Thanks, Ryo. Hey, Ryo. What? Could you close your eyes for a second? <laughs> what? <laughs> Just do it. Don't open them until I say so. Alright, alright. Okay. I guess that's enough. Ah, hey, Kikuchi, soy! I noticed their silhouettes and ran up to them. I wanted to talk to them as soon as possible. To laugh with them and everyone el- No! 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 No, I know what this is! You're not doing this to me! You're not- No! No! Fuck you! No, 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 no! No, we are not getting a kiss. We are getting a fucking murder. <laughs> oh my god. For those that haven't been here. For those that have not been here. Soi Kaito is insane. He cannot see. He cannot tell the difference between reality and a fantasy. In his storyline, he kills Ryo <laughs> at the end of his storyline. And, and then he drowns himself in the sea. Oh, no! You're not doing this to 
me. You're not. <laughs> you had me excited. Goodbye, Rio. I was still holding the remnants of a devastated century. I lost many things in the sea and acquired a certain bitterness. I was still waiting for your return, unable to co consign the remnants to darkness. When the mo night comes, Mom gives me something warm, and Dad pats me on the back. Perhaps I should have done the same to you. Please don't forget. Uh, I'll disappear. I'm not happy, but I'm disappearing. Uh... Oh wait, he stabbed himself! No, my boy! He stabbed himself instead! Okay, at least he didn't stab the other guy. I thought he was gonna kill... Okay. Please, don't forget me. Womp womp. Ah. Why? I ran towards the evening shoreline and saw a thoroughly dumbfounded Kikuchi Rio, as well as Soi Kaito, collapsed on the ground in a pool of blood, like he just burst open. I, I, I finally realized. But this story's year decided. The true course was clearly conveyed to my brain. Ah! Ah! Mamiya! Facts and conclusions never left any room for delusions. Mamiya, a shared illusion of the world's end downfall. That is the end. Oh my god. Or so you think. Characters. So, this is the end of episode 2, guys. There is a DLC. That I did get. Natsumi, born 1995, died 2012. Roy Kikuchi, 1995. Oh, he's still alive. Minato Tojo, born 1995. So they were born four years after the events. Haruki Morichika, 1990. Osamu Arisugawa, 1972. Toma Morichika, born 1982. Mayuri Nagaki, born 1981. Satoru Saim, born 1972. Kaito Soy, born 1984, died 2003. Wait, died 2003? Hold on a second. The year in which the world was prophesied to end, Tokyo, December 2012. Wait, no, 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 hold on, that doesn't make sense. He died 2003, but they said that it was 2012. Hold on a second, chat. There's some contradictory here. Something isn't right. Ending 2012. Is there another way I can change the ending? I don't think I can. Oh, wait! <gasps> There's more! Wait, hold on! It's still going! Wait a minute! Tokyo. During the year in which the world was prophesized to end, the Hawaiian made stories from 1999 and 2012 mix up. That's why Soi Kaito, who was from 1999, joined the others who were from 2012. He wasn't actually supposed to be here. Decide on the true course. 
bit. Are you satisfied with this? You burdened them with an unsalvageable unsalv fate. Are you satisfied that you made them suffer? Lemia gave no response. I didn't raise my face. I couldn't tell what expression he was making. I had enough. I don't care what happens to the laws of this world. I'll warp space-time, change the truth, and try again. This time, I'll make them all happy. At that moment, I had a feeling that Mamiya had just smiled. Oh no. To be continued next Doomsday Dreams. Uh Is Doomsday Dreams Hold on, restart. There's two Prologue one and Prologue two. A new spectator appears before the spectator who decided history. The new mentor claims the actions of the first one from the first one were born from pure ego. Uh and you know what, chat? I'm gonna make you wait. <laughs> we're gonna wait! Mamiya, you have some explaining to do in regards to Kaito. I'm very confused on Kaito's story a lot. Um, very, very confused. But we will be playing this again on Saturday. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, Saturday we'll, we will finish up Mamiya, uh, and finally get to the ending. I genuinely, I will have more hours than I do in Valorant in this game. I do not doubt it at this point. Um, but I will look into Kaito's, like, situation. I don't know, I don't fully understand what's happening to him. Uh, don't leave just yet, though, chat. We are gonna go raid. Let's go find a bitch to raid. Who is lad that we can raid? Who is lad that we can raid? Who is lad? Who is lad? Who is lad that we can raid? Uh, let's see. Ooh, we got a lot of people to choose from today. You know what? Let's send our love over to Ener Jinx. Uh, they were just here a moment ago lurking. They're playing some Monster Hunter. Uh, and I know some of you are a big fan of that, so let's do that. Uh, they are playing with, uh, fuck. Who is it? I think it's just, uh, friends of theirs. Uh, and Zeros might join them. Or Himbos might join. I don't know. But until next time, I will see you guys then. Tomorrow we'll be playing some Valorant. So speaking of Valorant, there we go. We're gonna be playing Valorant tomorrow. Uh, ba ba bye Or we might play Mamiya. Mm, we'll see. <laughs> but until next time, chat, I'll see you guys in the Trilochism. Bye-bye.